All right, let's look at another little exercise that uh, we have on uh, inventory, uh, inventory valuation over on the uh, balance sheet. And this exercise deals with determining what we call the lower of cost or uh, net realizable value. Uh, if you do some uh, research on this uh, outside of your class or if you're using an older textbook, uh, you may encounter the term lower of cost or market. Okay, that's a little bit older terminology, market being a synonym for net realizable uh, value. Okay, so one of the things that we, we want to recognize, one of the very first things that you would have learned, uh, maybe, depending on uh, how your course is taught, uh, is that we record assets at historical cost. However, we also have something to do, we have to deal with something in accounting called conservatism. Okay, conservatism. And so essentially uh, what that means is we want to present our financial statements in the fairest, or sometimes we might say the poorest possible light. So inventory is an asset. And so we, uh, if we have a choice between presenting it at cost, historical cost, what we paid for it, or net realizable value, well, we're going to go with whichever one of those is lower, uh, and so that, you know, there's a reason for that. So if, uh, if we have inventory that's older and maybe is, uh, is suffering from some obsolescence, uh, then it's probably, you know, the, the net realizable value, this side here is probably going to be, uh, lower than what we actually paid for it. So we're going to record our, our inventory values that way. Uh, however, in a period of rising costs, our cost is likely to be less. And so that's how we're going to record uh, inventory value. And then as far as our decision making, we can look at um, a couple of different things to help us make decisions about uh, various uh, types of inventory that uh, might be uh, obsolete, whereas, you know, overall, uh, we might be okay, but certain items uh, might be suffering from some uh, obsolescence. Uh, so anyway, we have this example here with Crane Company, and they've got, um, looks like they have six total items of inventory, uh, three different types of desks, and three different types of cabinets. And requirement A says, determine, determine the ending inventory amount by applying the net realizable value rule to... And so the first one says each uh, item of inventory. So the net realizable rule means that we're just going to go through and we're just going to pick uh, whichever uh, either cost or net realizable value, whichever one of these is lowest. And we're going to use that, we're going to use that figure. And then we... Um, we have we will come up with a total uh, at least the way i'm going to do this is i'm going to come up with a total inventory value um selecting only uh the most conservative item for uh each of these so i'm going to look at model 9001 for the uh desk and i'm going to say do i i know that i have i know that i have 70 units of this uh model and I'm going to go with the cost because it's less. Now, each item of inventory, I want to tell you, this will generally produce, uh, well, it will produce the uh, lowest overall inventory value. Uh, so um, if, you, if you do this and you get a, a figure with some of the other things that we're going to do, if your figure for this is higher, uh, then you've made a mistake somewhere because we will always use the lowest. We're going to move to model 9002. And we've got 45 uh, units times 
268. We're going to use the NRV value. We use cost for the first one, uh, but for this one, we're going to use NRV. We just keep going. We take the next model, 9003. We've got 20 units of those, and the historical cost is the lower cost, so we will use that, uh, 350. Then, because we're just doing each item of inventory, we're going to move straight into cabinets, and we're just going to keep going. We've got 120 uh, quantity of 7001, and we notice that the historical cost is the lowest, so we're going to use that. We move to the next model, of which we have 80 of these. We look at cost versus market, we find, or net realizable value, rather, uh, and we find that $88 net realizable value is the lower figure, so we will use that. And finally, we have model 7003, 50 units in stock, and the net realizable value is $126. Okay. So you have all of this information on your page now. And we can go through here and we can multiply all of these items out. In the interest of time, I'm going to provide you uh, with the answer. And the answer is $52,900. What you need to do is you need to go through and get the answer for each one of these items and then add them all together. And if you do that, you should come up with $52,900. And that is judging each item of inventory. Okay, so uh, by doing this, um, we come up with an unofficial figure for inventory. We're not going to value our inventory at $52,900. However, when we get to our official figure, for inventory valuation on the balance sheet, if we notice a very, very large gap between uh, this figure and our official number, then we probably have some inventory obsolescence that we uh, need to address, okay? So uh, the next item that we're gonna look at is each major category of inventory, and a little bit more to write down here. So I have gone and worked ahead and uh, figured out a way for this to all fit. And so for each major category, right, so we have, uh, we have desks and we also have cabinets that we need to look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to look at each of these items based on cost and each at net realizable value. So what I did, and you can see this here, is I took the 70 times the 190 cost, then the next item 45 times 280 right here, and then uh, 20 times 350 right here. And so, and then I did the, uh, let's see here, then I did the same thing for net realizable value. And so instead of using uh, this middle column here, I used the uh, column over to the right, 210, 268, and 360. And then it says to do this for each major category of inventory. So this helps me uh, identify uh, inventory obsolescence on a categorical basis. So what we do here is we say, okay, I'm going to apply this uh, based on cost, and then I'm going to base it on net realizable value. So we have $32,900 uh, inventory for cost and 33960 for NRV, we're going to select cost, all right? And then we're going to come down here for cabinets, and we're, uh, and we're going to do the exact same thing. However, we notice it was close, but the net realizable value produced a smaller inventory value than the historical cost basis so that's what we're going to use. And then we're going to take both of these figures, uh, 32,900 plus 21,020, uh, 
and we are going to add those together. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see here, 32,900 plus 21,020 gives us a final answer of 53,000 nine hundred and twenty dollars and that is uh, if we were to uh, assess inventory value on the basis of main categories all right so what we're hoping to see what we're hoping to see quite honestly is, you know if, we, if we're just thinking about this from a business perspective is we're really hoping that uh, our net realizable value is is higher uh, and so when it is that's that's that well I say that that's good for inventory value it's bad for replacement cost so just think about these things uh, as we're moving through here and then we got one more thing to do number three requirement is come up with the total inventory value and this total inventory value is what we will show um, as our official figure okay so here we're going to do it a little bit differently okay I'm going to push this up and so what we're doing notice I combined desks and cabinets together and so all of my figures that I have here I have a cost category and I have a net realizable value category so these first three items here are for desks at cost and the next three items here are for cabinets at cost and we come up with a value of fifty four thousand two hundred dollars of course you can you can and are encouraged to pause the video as we go uh, so that you can get some of these down on paper for net realizable value we did the same thing the first three figures are for the desks both quantity and the net realizable value the second three items are for the cabinets again quantity and net realizable value and so if we look at that we come up with a total of fifty four thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars uh, fortunately there's not a lot of difference we are going to then have an official inventory value of fifty four thousand two hundred why because that is the more conservative figure uh, to use. So hopefully that helps you understand the concept of uh, what we call LCM uh, in the old days, uh, but now we just call it lower of cost or uh, net realizable value. So 54,200 is our official inventory value. We compare that on an item by item basis, and those are pretty close. So we're doing a fairly good job uh, with our inventory.